Hello and welcome to Tonalist Paintings by M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the study that we are doing today is called Golden Afternoon. It's a 5x7 uh, and it was painted back in, uh, best guess is January or February of 2015, so it's about a year ago. And uh, <clears throat> this particular study has uh, been sold, but I still have the larger version, uh, which will be going up uh, over on Saturday uh, in my studio. Uh, a lot of people tend to comment on it and like it. Um, you know, uh, we'll see if anything ever happens with it. But uh, I, this is also a motif I just recently repainted as a horizontal image. So. I took that same reference, uh, or very similar reference from the same day, same location, and uh, I've done a horizontal uh, painting of it that has a bit of a different uh, tone than this, and uh, although compositionally has some definite uh, uh, things in common with the one I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, you can see there in the video uh, how I hold up my panels. Uh, Anyway, uh, today, uh, it's Tuesday, I'm probably going to put this up tomorrow, which is Wednesday, but I'm starting uh, with a new student tomorrow, and I can tend to find that a bit um, draining, so I wanted to make sure I had something in the can, um, so that uh, you guys that are following this on a regular basis have, uh, you know, got a reason to live for yet another uh, three or four days. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, some of you have been getting a hold of me on the email, which is uh, awesome. I really appreciate that, and I love to talk to fellow artists or just art appreciators. And um, you know, uh, it, I think uh, tonalism is—it's uh, time has come. It's time to be reappraised and re-embraced by the public at large, um, which is one of the reasons why put this uh, work up on the internet free of charge. It's basically my way of giving back to tonalism and my way of spreading the word and getting other artists on board and artists that are interested. Hopefully they uh, have a resource that uh, they can at least see how some other uh, you know, person is going after this uh, sort of mode of painting. And there's no shortage of painters out there working in what the, the direct mode, which is you know, not that dissimilar than my first color stage, although they tend to work on a white canvas, or if it is toned, it's, I don't know, it's toned. I really don't know. I mean, I, I think this uh, red tone is pretty vital to what I do. But, um, and I did uh, read uh, recently in a, a landscape painting book uh, where a painter had mentioned this as a definite good plan for achieving a certain amount of luminosity in your work. Um, speaking of work, uh, I've been in the process of uh, finishing some things and um, in my studio and I've had a, a few days off ill, but uh, I have managed to get some work done and uh, although I had one today that uh, basically crashed and burned, but to, to be honest, I, I, I need to uh, take it as a lesson to listen to my intuition uh, more than I do. I mean, <clears throat> I've been struggling with this motif since I since I even put it together in the computer. Um, it's been it's had problems, it's had flaws. I always think I can, uh, when I end up pursuing these, I end up, I wasn't thinking I can overcome, um, but uh, really, uh, more and more I'm listening to that intuition, I'm listening to that inner voice that says, no, nah, no, nah, it's got a problem, it's got a problem you're not going to be able to resolve. Generally it's some sort of compositional problem, right? You know, but it could be other problems. I, I, I have, uh, you know, I make mistakes and I fail, just like every other human being. Um, but I try to fail less and I try to make less mistakes and I try to do consistently better work and one of the uh, ways to do that is to listen to this intuition which is, you know, firing off and trying to tell me this isn't going to work, this is not going to happen. Anyway, I took this painting outside and attempted to break the panel. Uh, 
I, I it was way too tough. This was a, one of my older panels. It was cowrie through and through. It's marine ply. I could not break it by stepping on it, no matter what I did. So um, I just threw it in the trash, uh, and I kind of buried it deep enough in the bin. Hopefully, uh, no one will ever come across it, and I won't uh, walk in someone's house one day and see it up on the wall. That would really be a bummer, because um, uh, you know, well, it probably wasn't the worst painting I ever did. You know, it just, and I could have spent a few hours a day. Uh, you know, I jumped in. I I'd been looking at this thing in the, you know, over against the wall for a month or so. Uh, seeing the problems, you know, not really, not really knowing how to address it without, without completely repainting the entire thing, and, uh, which is something I could have done. But I mean, I have other other motifs going and other things I can just finish and uh, you know at least once a year it's it's a good thing just to take that board and bust it up get rid of it admit you failed and uh, you know funny enough the uh, the painting that I was working on right before I took it on it was going really well and I knew it was going to be successful and uh, you know I did very little to it in the second color stage because uh, it was already already pretty much there so um, that's great. And then, uh, I took on another one after, and, uh, that went well, and, um, same deal there. I knew that that first color stage that I'd gotten about 85% of the painting done, and, uh, the things that I, uh, needed to do in my second color pass, um, you know, I did them relatively quickly, and I didn't mess with it too much, and, uh, it's drying on the the wall of my studio right now as we speak and I'm pretty happy with it so um, and this latest pass I'm gonna have about I think it's 15 or so that survived out of the initial 18 and one of the reasons I've been going after 18 is so that I can abandon things and uh, you know either abandon them at, at the 5 by 7 stage or after the 5 by 7 stage um, I don't really like to do that so much. Ah, you can see there is a bug on the lens of the video camera right now. Isn't that awesome? That's a fly in my studio. Um, so this was painted a year ago in the summertime, and we can get quite a few flies down there at the Quarry Art Center. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, you know, it's a slice of life. How long he's going to stay on that lens, I do not know. I don't know, but. Uh, that's the thing about doing the videotaping, you know. It's there. It's, the painting's going to be around for hopefully 500 years. The video, it's anybody's guess. And as you can see, this video was done all in one pass, um, which was the way that I worked back then on 5x7s. And really, I try and do everything in that first pass if I can. And uh, like I said, this was sold, so, you know, pretty, pretty happy with that. Anyway, we're at the end. Thanks for joining us uh, Tuesday. January 12th, and uh, God bless you, David Bowie. He's just passed, and he was one of the greatest artists of the 20th century, no doubt. Um, we'll see you on Saturday. Meanwhile, take good care, and stay out of trouble.